something came out over the weekend which I watch, which I kind of I understand, but I know it sticks in the in the craw of quite a lot of Arsenal fans. Was Robin van Persie came out and and and, and spoke openly about what happened at Arsenal. I understand it, and maybe my my view is a lot different to the likes of yourself and a lot of the fan base because I've been on the inside. So when I heard what he said, I read between the lines because what he came out and it, it maybe it wasn't done in the right way, the way he done it because he put a statement out, didn't he, saying that yeah. he won't renew his contract. And straight away that turns Arsenal fans against him. Of course it does. But the fact of the matter is what he said that he never got offered a contract. He never got offered a contract. So saying that he won't renew his contract, in my eyes, that means I never got offered a contract. So I can't renew my contract. So that's why I'm not gonna renew my contract. So he was protecting the old regime because he, he wanted to leave. I think there was talks behind closed doors about where are Arsenal going? I think this is really important for me where were Arsenal going? Are Arsenal going to invest to challenge? And I honestly believe that we've seen it over the years. Arsenal never invested to challenge. Arsenal never... He's the top, he was the top player at the time. They never secured him. And what was even most telling was if Arsenal offered him a contract, Arsenal as a football club would have come out and said, we offered him a contract and he turned it down. But that narrative never came out. It was always left to Van Persie to say what he said. And now it's kind of come back to bite him a little bit because it seems as though he's changed the narrative. But I don't think he has. I just think that he wanted some assurances. He never got them. So he's come out and he's said, you know, they never offered me a contract. So that's in the end. That's why I wanted to leave. And, and also, before we, we get your your take on it, Lee, because I could see, I could feel the heat off you. Why would you sell him to your, your biggest rivals? That's the part. And it's not just Van Persie. Arsenal sold a lot of their star players to their rivals. So that isn't a club to me. And I know there's there's been a lot of chat about this. That to me isn't a club who are looking to do what's best and to be the best. That means, that to me, is you're selling your jewels just to make ends meet. What's your thoughts? Right, I agree with that, to a certain degree about that. What, from what I take it from what fans are grieved about with Robin Van Persie, one is that he went to Manchester United. Yeah. You know what I mean? If he'd have gone somewhere That's a else, big no-no, I, I, I know if that. If he'd have gone yeah. somewhere else, I think maybe he would have been forgiven, a little bit like, you know. I think, um, two, what a lot of the fans Agreed about. Yeah, show the ambition. I, I don't, I've got no problem with him saying that. You know what I mean? Show me the ambition. He's a footballer. He wants to win trophies. He's never going to win them at Arsenal, which has been proven. <laughs> That's been proven. But he was injured for a long, long time yeah. as well. Like, you know what I mean? So there was a little bit of, you know, oh, can you give us another year or whatever? I understand that he probably looks at it. I'm coming up 30 and everything like that. And for me, for him to go to Manchester United and then they go on and win the title was hard for Arsenal fans to take. And he's the top man. He's the top man. Now, he's come out at the weekend, to my surprise, and turned around and said, well, I was never offered a contract. Now, why, why come out now and say that? Why couldn't he have said that two, three seasons ago? Um, why now? Is it because he's with BT Sport and he's got, you know the views might drop if he's not... Um... Or is it because the old regime was still in place? Because remember, like I said previous, I believe he was, there was an element of protection for, for the old regime in saying that I won't renew my contract. Because if Robin Van Persie had come out and said, I never got offered a contract, what would the fan base do? The fan base would, 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 would slaughter the club. I, I get that, I get that. But, but you, you, you've been an ex-Arsenal player, so you know, you, when, when you go down the Arsenal now, you, you've got affection, everybody loves you, because you used to play for the Arsenal, mm -hmm. you won trophies and whatever. He has done that, mm -hmm. but he, why would you protect the regime to, to not have that? You know what I mean? Like you can go down, you know, let's face it, if you walk down the Emirates, you're gonna get love, right? If he walks down the Emirates to go from, from the, for the BT thing, you know what I mean? He's gotta have a bodyguard. He's gonna, get, he's gonna get abuse. Uh, uh, but again, Lee, it's, 
my thoughts ain't to change Arsenal fans' opinion of Robin Van No, Persson. no, you're just trying to the, say the truth. That, that's the truth. I think, you know, the, the cast is already die. The cast is, the, the die is already cast when it comes to what they think about him. Because as far as they're concerned, he's a snake. He left us and went to Manchester United. He don't love the club anymore, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that war has gone under the bridge. Hearing him come out with this now, just think about it. What, why has he got to lie about anything? Because he's not in Arsenal fans' affection. He's not trying to win the Arsenal fans over because the Arsenal fans, are, the majority hate him anyway. So it's not that for me. It's just a matter of sometimes when these things ride on your conscience as a player, because I don't think he's happy the way it came out for him. So he's just trying to set the record straight as far as I'm concerned. And I'm, as I say, I'm lucky enough that I've been on the inside as an ex-pro to read between the lines. Robin Van Persie never came out and said, I never got offered a contract. Why? But he's coming out with it now. It's, as far as I'm concerned, the only way he could have got out is by protecting the regime. Andre, that's a really good question. For me, like I said, the pressure and the scrutiny is on Unai Emery now. As far as I'm concerned, it's a 12-month deal for Unai Emery. I know there's, I think the club have a, an option of a season, but I don't see him surviving if Arsenal don't qualify for the Champions League. Because we go back to the first part of the, what I've learned about Arsenal. That recruitment plan is all hell-bent on Arsenal yeah. qualifying for the Champions League to then get the, that better level of player to challenge in the Champions League. For me, that's, that's really important. So I think all bets are off if, if, if he doesn't qualify. Sometimes VAR gets a, a bad rap because of the change of the handball law, for instance. Yeah, that ain't their fault. And, and it's, not, it's not VAR's fault, but it's still VAR. It, you know, that's the biggest talking point, And it's not the football, which I think is a travesty, a yeah. justice. If it was me, I'd scrap it. Yeah. I really would. I'd just have more officials and give the officials more powers because you know they had them uh, the, the guys at the end of the pitch who were doing the touch the, the, the goal line but they were never making a decision so if they're all mic'd up then they could make a decision but i'd leave it to the referee i think we need better uh, referees anyway um more professional also with the var what i don't like about it two things right one if you they're doing it for one thing, what not for not another. Like I'm not having a go because it was Spurs. The, the fact of the matter is, it's handball. That's the new rule. That's mm. nothing to do with VAR. It's a poor rule, mm. by the way. But then there's a definite penalty, and they choose not to get involved with that. Well, you can't can't pick and choose. Oh, that, that, that's not a thing that you know. It's either a penalty. You've got to get involved. And the other thing, Kev, from a from a fan that goes to games, they don't show it on the screen. So you're so you're on TV. You're watching it, right? Uh, and but in the see, stadium, you ain't seeing nothing. You're just seeing a blank screen. So, if it, so what they're telling you is it's better if you watch games on TV than it is at the ground. Armchair fan. Armchair, it's not right. And it's not right. So for that reason, only get rid. Lee, I, I believe if they had it on the screens at the stadium, it would do away with a lot of the the uncertainty. Yeah. With fans, oh, with the fan base, I really do. You're, pay, you're paying like you know some people. You know, go go to Spurs next week, Kev, uh, when we play at home next. You're paying hundred pound for that ticket, yeah. right? A VAR decision comes up against Spurs. You're not allowed to see it, but everybody at home paying their their subscription of nine ninety nine or whatever <laughs> it is, like, are seeing everything that goes on in there, yeah. like you know. Is that fair? No, no, it's not. It's not. Like I said, listen, are the authorities strong enough to change it or scrap it? I don't think they are. No. But for me, I'd scrap it, James. Well, uh, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I spoke to Grant Shacker and he came up with some really good things, you know what I mean? Like, and you think to myself, you know, you could be a leader. But I do feel with, with, with Grant, I'll be honest, that it, when he plays, he still makes a lot of mistakes on, the, on, on, on his passing and things like that. Like, you know? I want to be a little bit out, out, outrageous. Out, outrageous here like, and go with a player that I don't like or didn't like. Right, you know what I mean? Tell me. I'm going to go with David Luiz as captain. That's my guy. And so I'm just going to go with it. I just feel that what I see on Saturday, he, he has shown me in one game what we have lacked for a long, long time. I'll be honest, someone that's going to 
put his foot in there when it matters, put his body on the line. Also, he's got a little bit of devil about him, which I like. Toughness. A little yeah. bit of toughness. And he's done it, Kev. Yeah. He's won trophies, whether they be at Chelsea or not. He's done, done it there. And that would be my captain. I would go for David Luiz because he's been a Premier League captain already. I think the five captain thing that Unai Emery done last season was was farcical. Yeah. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think David Luiz could prove to be the signing of the season for us. I really do. Because to be able to galvanise that back four, I, I think Socrates settled down better beside David Luiz on Saturday. I really do. And for me, David Luiz has that, he has that presence for me. And I would, I would make him captain. I really would. We agree. For once, Lee. <laughs> That's the conclusion. Thanks for watching the Kevin Campbell show with me. Lee. And Lee. I've enjoyed it. You enjoyed it, Lee? I think it was very good. I hope you've enjoyed it as well, because it was good. Leave as many comments as you can and questions as you can, and we'll do our best to answer them all, and we'll see you very soon. See you soon.